Today on the School of Podcasting, I asked you, hey, what are you not going to do in 2024 that you used to do in 2023? And what new things are you going to try? And we got some very interesting answers. Hit it, ladies. The School of Podcasting with Dave Jackson. Podcasting since 2005, I am your award-winning Hall of Fame podcast coach, Dave Jackson, thanking you so much for tuning in. If you are new to the show, this is why I help you plan, launch, grow, and if you want to monetize your show, my website, schoolofpodcasting.com, and you can use the coupon code LISTENER, that's L-I-S-T-E-N-E-R, when you sign up for either a monthly or yearly subscription And before we get to the answers, I do just want to say a quick thing. On my last two episodes, one was about this kind of sleazy company that's artificially inflating numbers, and I kind of lost my um, uh, kosher, uh, what's the word? I lost my cool. And uh, I had a lot of people at PodFest say, hey, I really liked that episode. And I was like, really? And they're like, yeah, I loved the passion. And then if you listen to last week's episode, I was a little down because a buddy of mine, Lee Silverstein from the, well, originally it was the colon cancer podcast. Now it's We Have Cancer. Uh, Father Time is catching Lee. And uh, Lee has been past his expiration date for quite some time. And uh, it is what it is. And I let my emotions come through. And people said that was really cool that I was able to be that vulnerable. And really what I was being is just authentic. And so uh, if you all have links to those out in the show notes, but getting to the question of the month, because we are all in this together, trying to grow our audience, trying to be the most efficient, trying to make the most impact on our audience. And I said, Hey, anybody out there that uh, is trying different things, if you tried something that didn't work or vice versa, you tried something that did work, let us know And as always, you came through for me. I deeply appreciate it every time you submit an answer. And here's the really cool thing about this. There are a lot of new names that send in their answers. And that that just makes me giddy when I see that. Because how do you grow your podcast? You get it in front of people who should be listening to you but aren't. And I'm not sure how you guys found me that answered the question, but I'm so glad you're here. So to answer the question... What are you not going to do anymore in 2024? And what are you going to try? Let's get to it. This is Kim Newlove from the Pharmacist Voice podcast, which you can find at thepharmacistvoice.com. The thing I'm going to stop doing in 2024 is a social media blast every Friday. As a podcaster, one of the ways that I let my audience know that a new episode is out is to do a social media blast meaning I post on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and a pharmacist-specific site called RPH Ally. All of those posts, all five of those posts, take 20 minutes or more, 20 to 30 minutes, and I always get distracted by social media. So it's more than just the time to post. I'm looking at content while I'm there and getting distracted. I need to stop it. What am I going to do about it? I'm going to start using some sort of a tool like Social Bee or ClickUp. Social Bee or ClickUp. There are other things that I want to start doing in 2024, but I'll just leave it at that. Again, this is Kim Newlove from the Pharmacist Voice podcast, which you can find at thepharmacistvoice.com. A little bit about my podcast. The Pharmacist Voice podcast connects my background as a pharmacist with my second career as a voice actor and a podcast host. I use my podcast for branding, marketing, networking, and relationship building. It has served me well over the years. At this point, I do solo shows and interview shows. I do a weekly show. So what I do for my solo shows is drug name pronunciations. For my interview shows, it will be a range of anything from a pharmacist entrepreneur to someone in poisoning prevention education to public health service commissioned corps officers and more. I have interesting interviews and my audience is typically pharmacists, pharmacy students, pharmacy technicians, pharmacy professors, pharmacy owners, and medical narrators. 
Four years ago, I started a LinkedIn page for my podcast. I can see that I have, I think, about 450 followers on LinkedIn. If I look through all of those followers, I see a lot of pharmacists, pharmacy students, etc. My suggestion to you is start a LinkedIn page for your podcast. Find out who your audience is. There's only so much we can learn from downloads. Dave, thanks for everything you do for podcasters everywhere. I can't wait to hear all of the responses for the January 2024 question of the month. Happy podcasting, everyone. Thank you, Kim. And Kim now gets mentioned in about 95% of my presentations because Kim was the one that said, "Uh, Dave, you know I love you, but you have a typo in the name of your show. And sure enough, it was School of Podcasting, Plan, Launch, Grow, and Montize. And I was like, oh, which is why I always tell people, you need somebody from the outside because mom would just go, oh, look at you. You're so professional. But Kim was nice enough to let me know I'd shot myself in the foot. And she's not the only person that's kind of like, hey, this social media thing. Here is Gary Arndt. And he's going to be on the show in a couple of weeks talking about how he got into new and noteworthy. Well, not so much how, but what happened when he did. But here he is talking about what he's not going to do in 2024. Well, I suppose the one thing that I'm really not going to do is probably put much emphasis on social media. I think that I've tried it and I've tried it and I've talked to other people who've tried it. It just doesn't convert well for developing podcast listeners. I I hired a company and they're making these very good looking videos, like one minute trailers for TikTok. And they're, they're very well produced but I don't see them doing anything. And I'm thinking like I could take a lot of that effort and just make a proper full length video of my entire episode and make a real YouTube channel for a fair amount of what I'm spending to do these trailers on TikTok. Yeah. Uh, TikTok had launched a podcast integration feature, which they got rid of. Facebook did the same thing. All these companies flirt with it and then they abandon it. Uh, and at the end of the day, I think you just got to go back to the the basics. And that is you promote a podcast within the podcast ecosystem. Makes sense. Anything you're going to try in 2024? Bigger shows. Yeah. It's really a matter of scale. So a lot of what I did for promoting stuff on apps still works, but I've gotten to a point where it just doesn't move the needle that much, getting another hundred subscribers. So what I'm really looking at now is potentially doing promotions with very large shows, much larger than my own, in in an attempt to to get the kind of growth like I've just had in the last few weeks. Yeah. Because that's really what I need to do. Yes, Gary is from Everything Everywhere Daily. You can find that at everything-everywhere.com. And yeah, Gary is getting hundreds of thousands of downloads. I think he actually went over a million a month. So yeah, again, if you want to Get that interview. The minute it's ready, go to schoolofpodcasting.com slash subscribe. Hey, Dave, this is Tyler Hespeler with a travelpath.com and the Travel Path Podcast. So the Travel Path Podcast is a show hosted by my wife, Hope, and I, where we interview people who have been able to quite simply travel, whether it's full-time, part-time, they're traveling out of an RV, hotels, whatever the case may be, we just ask them how they've been able to set their lives up to travel. And each show has a part two where they come back on and talk about one destination they know best. So we ask all sorts of questions that would help somebody plan for that destination. So as far as question of the month, one thing I'm going to stop doing this year is just wasting time and especially wasting time on social media. Um, Anybody noticing a pattern here? Just wasting time and especially wasting time on social media. A couple things I've implemented this year that have helped with that have been using Grayscale on my phone and also literally setting a 10 minute timer on my Apple Watch. Every 10 minutes, my watch goes off and I just want to make sure I'm doing something productive with my day. And then as far as one thing I'll continue doing into 2024 is just waking up earlier. And for any fellow Miracle Morning practitioners out there, I've been doing that every day of 2024 so far. And then I've allocated an extra hour and a half in the morning to really just get to work on this podcast, editing it and all the work that's involved in creating and uploading and posting podcasts. So that's my answer for this month's question. I'm looking forward to hearing the rest of the answers. And again, that's Tyler Hespler with a travelpath.com and the Travel Path Podcast. Tyler, thank you so much. And I highly recommend if you haven't done that now, he's doing every 10 minutes. But if you set it for any kind of interval, uh, once an hour, if you just want to start, because otherwise it, it gets kind of annoying that every 10 minutes 
But I'm here to tell you, especially if you're a person that's like, I'm going to record my podcast in the car because I'm too busy. Come on now. You're not now. I'm here to tell you, set that timer and you're going to find yourself watching, I don't know, Seinfeld reruns or something that you probably couldn't, you know, put to the side and record your podcast instead of great uh, advice there, Tyler. Thank you so much. And it's funny that I heard these answers because I just had somebody uh, tell me about another podcast about podcasting by Angie M. Jordan, and I put it on, and here's what Angie said in the episode that I clicked play on. We're over social media. <laughs> that is the conversation. We're over social media. And her show is called Podcast That Pays. I'll have a link to this out in the show notes at schoolofpodcasting.com slash 917. Should let you know that if you are a younger person that wants podcasting from a female person of color uh, perspective that says and and all that kind of stuff a lot, uh, you know, and I'm not a prude. I'm just letting you know if you're in the car and you got kids, you may not want to throw that on. And also, Angie, I say this with love. You need a pop filter. So moving on. Hi, Dave. This is Julie South, a School of Podcasting student. I've got two podcast shows. The first one is the Vet Staff Podcast, which is where veterinary professionals go to get their heads screwed on straight, strengthen their resilience, and find jobs they're excited about going to on Monday mornings. That show can be found at vetstaffpodcast.com. My other podcast is the Your Catholic Corner Show. Your Catholic Corner helps Catholics prepare spiritually for each Sunday's Mass midweek each week, and for non-Catholics to discover what's so absolutely beautiful about the Catholic faith. You can find that at yourcatholiccorner.com. My answer to what am I going to stop doing and start doing in 2024 is the same for both my shows. I've been telling myself now for about 170 episodes of the Vet Staff podcast, and I'm somewhat embarrassed to say, since about 2010 for your Catholic Corner, that's a few thousand episodes, right? That I need to start a weekly newsletter for each show, for each podcast. What I'm going to stop doing is allowing all of those other priorities to keep knocking newsletter down my list of show priorities so that this year is the year that it happens for both shows. So I'm going to start a newsletter and I'm going to stop procrastinating about it. A question I have for other listeners is around their newsletters. I'm interested to know how podcasters invite listeners to register for their newsletter on their show, and then what email marketing newsletter service do they use? Thanks, Dave. I love your show, and I love your service. Julie, I love your accent. I know you're like, it's just the way I talk, but it makes me smile every time I hear it. And how do you invite people to your newsletter? Well, number one, you got to have something they want. So for example, a member of the School of Podcasting, Craig Van Slyke from livewellandflourish.com, He's got a, he teaches at a university and he is launching AIGoesToCollege.com and you'll see where he's got his trailer there, but he also has a sign-up form and you can get a guide for higher education professionals, which is his target audience. And you basically put your name and email in and you're good to go. So that's one thing. You have some sort of lead magnet. So I have things like schoolofpodcasting.com slash checklist. That's a launch checklist to have something that they want. And it doesn't have to be a war and peace. And then in terms of services, you could use something like send Fox, which has kind of a lifetime deal. You can buy there's convert kit. There's I like mailer light. If you're on a budget, I think that's the best budget one because that does have a, a number of free people. They're all kind of, I don't want to say they're all the same, but they're all very similar and pick one that fits your budget and go from there. But uh, if you have any questions, of course, Julie's a member of the School of Podcasting. She can set up some one-on-one -on -one consulting and we can do a deep dive into this. Next up, we have the one, the only, he's blind and deaf, and yet he's podcasting. So when you go, I don't know if I can do it. Yeah, you can. if Kelvin can do it, you can do it. Take it away, Kelvin. 
Hey Dave, this is Kelvin, the deaf blind potter. Yes, I am blind and I am severely deaf without hearing aids. And what am I doing different this year and what am I giving up from last year? Well, it is kind of a be like a two part way I'm going to say this. So what I'm giving up from last year is being isolated. And this year I'm doing two major things that I want to share with you. And one of them is I'm going out to meetups, meeting new people and making the awkward situation more awkward because nobody knows what to do with the deaf blind guy just standing there with his blind cane asking anybody there, anybody there. I would like to talk to somebody, but I'm doing it. I'm going to live beyond this challenge and I'm going to make it happen and I'm going to meet new friends, and I'm going to build new networks. And I've already had great success so far. because I've been to already about six different networking events, and I'm starting to build new relationships and getting more people for my show at the deafblindpottershow.com. And something new I'm doing on that show, which is my radio show, is I'm doing it live on YouTube and while I'm live on YouTube, I'm sitting on my pottery wheel, I'm making a piece, and I'm interviewing my guests about their story and how they live beyond their challenges, and I mold their story literally right on the pottery wheel live and shape this piece into a beautiful piece during my one-hour radio show with this guest, and it is incredible, and it's one of those things... I'm kind of proud of myself for living beyond this challenge. One last thing. I also have a podcast called Perseverance Podcast. You can find it at perseverancepodcast.com where I interview people about their perseverance stories. Like, for example, I interviewed the most famous Trippendale stripper and the most famous porn star in the industry and how he came out of it is now rescuing people from that industry and changing their lives for the good. So like I always say, go live beyond your challenges and I'll see you next time. And I know a lot of you are like, wait, what What was the name of that show? Links, schoolgoodpodcasting.com slash 917. Thank you, Kelvin. Hi, Dave. My New Year's podcasting resolutions are to stop affiliate advertising and start recording and offering more episodes for both my shows. This is Mark Vinette from the History of North America podcast and videocast, as well as the Historical Jesus podcast, where I explore the sweeping saga of the life and times of the Galilean preacher from Nazareth at markvinette.com. And so that one required me to, I reached back out to Mark and I'm like, hey, what's the deal with affiliate marketing? I've had some success with that in the past. And he basically said affiliate, meaning no guarantee fee for the podcast are only paid if the listener clicks on a custom link and they actually buy the product. He says, in my experience, affiliate rarely generates any revenues and gives an enormous amount of free advertising for the product. I suspect it's only worth if your podcast have a hundred thousand listeners per show. And my advice to that, I, I, I see where Mark is coming from. The key to affiliate marketing is you have to have the right product for the right audience. And I'll tell this quickly, but I, advertised the Total Gym because Christy Brinkley and Chuck Norris were on the TV all the time about it. And it turns out my audience was primarily female for a weight loss show I was doing. And I made $75 in a year. That was it. I had one cell, nice big commission, but it didn't fit the audience. And then I found these things called Fit Decks, where unfortunately I don't make them anymore, but I was making $1.50 every time somebody bought a deck of these cards and you would deal yourself a weight loss or a, a exercise, a routine, a, what do you call that? A workout. There we go. And I uh, would get the, like a lot of people buying those multiple decks at a time. And I was getting hundreds of dollars per month because I bought a deck. That was the other thing. I bought a deck, used it myself, and then talked about it from the first person. So affiliate marketing can be just free publicity for an advertiser, but you got to make sure it fits the audience. And as soon as I figured out my audience was stay-at-home moms. And I said, I could see turning this into a game with your kids. And it was like, cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. So yeah, for more information on affiliate marketing, I never say this enough, check out my book, Profit From Your Podcast, Proven Strategies to Turn Listeners into a Livelihood. 
That's available at ProfitFromYourPodcast.com. Here is another new voice, and lucky for me, another new member of the School of Podcasting. Check out his pipes. Hey, Dave. Rick here from Renewed Mindsets. You know, the one thing I'm going to stop doing this year is counting out options before I've tried them, whether it's in podcasting or in life in general. I don't usually dwell on the past, but I can recognize missed opportunities. Things that I've passed up on starting or experiencing because of overthinking or doubting myself or my abilities. The one thing I'm going to start doing this year, asking for help from experts in areas where where I usually depend on my own moxie in my attempt to get them started, starting with my podcast, which is Renewed Mindsets. It's a Christian podcast that teaches the basics of the faith to Gen X and Millennials, men and women who may have missed some important teachings while they were building careers and raising families. I just want to spread the good news, which will empower people to live as God intended, with peace and hope, through His Word and laughter. You can find me at RenewedMindsets.com. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome, Rick. Thanks so much. Yeah, I uh, had an episode, if you go out, episode number 914. So anytime you hear an episode number on the School of Podcasting, if you just go to, in this case, schoolofpodcasting.com slash 914, I talk about how using a coach really saved me a ton of time. Yes, it's money, but the time they saved me was far worth the expense. Ethan Reese here with the Daily Sports History Podcast, giving you a rapid deep dive into sports history every day. And in 2024, I'm going to stop doing my movie guy voice that I did for the show to start with because I wanted it to be like an NFL films, very dramatic and theatrical. And it didn't really work too well in the editing and was causing a lot of issues for me and sounded very choppy. And I started to do my regular voice that you hear now so lovely and beautifully. And it's been more enjoyable, easier to edit, and I'm able to add more and more of myself into it. And that's what I'm going to do in 2024 is to add more of myself into the show, more jokes, more enjoyable themes, more enjoyable things. As I tell sports history every day. So you can check out Daily Sports History at dailysportshistory.com. You just listen every day. Thank you so much, Ethan. Yeah, one of the biggest compliments I think I've ever got was I was at a um, you know podcast movement or something of that nature, and somebody said, wow, you're just like you are on the show. And so it really is. You just want to be yourself because it's hard trying to be something you're not. Uh, you know, if I were to do an, the, the angry old man voice, I, I do that more for about two minutes and A, I start doing this and I keep dropping in and out and then my voice kills me and I'm like, why are you doing that? To you? you just can't just be yourself. Hello, Dave. This is Ralph Step Jr. from the Ask Ralph podcast, where we seek to teach our listeners how to master their finances, lower their taxes, grow their business and find personal success. As you know, I recently joined the School of Podcasting. And I got to be honest with you, I'm truly enjoying the tips, tricks, but mostly the community of the school. So when you ask, what am I going to stop doing in 2024? It's really pretty simple. I'm going to stop looking for answers on my own. And I'm already investing my time and effort in getting a deeper connection with the school of podcasting. I am making a point of being engaged with the community, attending the Lunch with Dave sessions, listening to the Saturday morning show, but most of all, Using the platform as a resource for making my podcast better. The school podcasting will remain an important part of my podcast journey. And the relationships which I'm already building have resulted in dynamic improvements to the Ask Ralph show. So thank you, Dave, and everyone else involved. You're making this journey a ton of fun. Thank you, Ralph. Find him at askralphpodcast.com. And, you know, that was really nice of Ralph to say. And if you have nice things to say about me, that sounds weird. Uh, but just know that there is an affiliate program for the School of Podcasting. So if you're going to be sending people my way, you might as well make a buck while you're doing it. It's my way of saying thank you because then, well, you're doing me, you're doing my marketing for me, which is what an affiliate program is all about. Next up, we have Alan. Hello, Dave. Thanks so much for this question. My name's Alan C. Paul at God and Gigs. What I'm going to stop doing in 2024 and for the foreseeable future, if not forever, is use the three words, build an audience. And I know that is common for podcasters. I've been in podcasting since 2016, and I know that's kind of part of the parlance now, 
build your audience. But I just decided and felt that that concept doesn't really work with the ideals that I have for podcasting. You see what I feel like building an audience ends up being is trying to build a bunch of spectators and spectators, last time I checked, want spectacles. They want something new. They want to be entertained. And one of my favorite quotes comes from a guy, since I'm a musician, that wrote a uh, very famous piece. You might've heard of it, Handel's Messiah and the Hallelujah Chorus. And what he said when someone asked, hey, I was entertained, he said, I was so sorry if you were entertained. I wished to make you better. And so I think community is a better way to build my business, my community. And so I'm just going to stop saying build an audience. I'm going to start saying build a community. That's my commitment for 2024. Hold me to it. If you anybody that's listening, hears me share and I say the words build an audience, please make sure to virtually slap me on the hand. And I'm going to commit, like I said, on the, on the flip side is to build a community or continue to say build community because I think communities build each other. They talk to each other. Audiences, I just feel, is a one-way monologue, entertain me kind of persona and a more corporate kind of thought process, which I just don't think fits what podcasting really is about. It's about interaction. It's about engagement. It's about sharing. And I just feel community is a better word for that. If you're interested in what I share, I share at God and Gigs. It's a community of Christian creators who are becoming the creatives that God created us to be. If you're interested in that, you can find us on all podcast apps at God and Gigs, G-O-D-A-N-D-G-I-G-S. Thanks so much for letting me share, Dave. Love the show. Thank you, Alan. Yeah, GodandGigs.com will also take you to all things Alan C. Paul. Last but not least... Our good friend, Andrea. Hi, Dave. This is Andrea Getson from the Spirit Care Podcast. But I thought I would just give you a bit of a chuckle first. I was listening to this episode around, you know, launching your podcast in 2024 with realistic, ep- realistic expectations. And I realized you had referred to something about, uh, there was a number where you said, okay, you, you'll have 30 downloads and you were telling us to do it, that would be okay. And I laughed because I was like, well, you know, what does it mean when you only have one download? And that was actually because you were testing. And I know exactly you know, what the problem is. It's all about me, that problem as to why that my podcast isn't getting out there. If only there was some sort of school to help people in this kind of situation, I'm just saying. In 2024, I'm going to stop trying to be everywhere and doing everything. So I started with the website. I think it's so funny. Everything you mentioned in this episode, I've actually done. So the blog, uh, I went to the website. I've been on social media. I've got the Pinterest account. <laughs> I did the the uh, podcast and I also did YouTube. So I just tried everything because I was just trying to get my message out there. So I want to stop doing that. Stop trying to be everywhere. And then number two, I want to stop caring about everything and my audience. So it's caring about everybody. Like, well, I, will this person like it? Will that person care? And I know who my audience is, but it seemed like I was caring about people who might not even listen to the podcast. So, you know, here's my thought. If it's for you, you'll listen. If it's not, you won't. And that is two choices. You will or you won't. So it's a choice rather. So uh, those are the two that I'm going to stop. I am going to start putting out one show a month. Uh, I know it's work and I'm excited about that, but that's what I'm going to start. So um, I think one time I heard on one of your episodes, something about, you know, making sure you have 10 show ideas because then you know that what you have is a is a good show. But I have about like four or five, but I have a ton of ideas of things that I can record that I think will be of value to the people I'm trying to serve. And so thank you for much, so much for this opportunity. I, again, am Andrea Katz and my podcast is a faith-based podcast. So it's Spirit Care. We're care for your physical, mental, and emotional well-being begins with care for your spirit. Andrea, thank you so much. And I know you're like, I'm going to do one a month. Hey, if that's what you can do, then you do one a month. And I'm here to tell you, once you get used to the fact that, well, some people say 
I think you should do this kind of show where you do this and that and also some of this and that. And you go, yeah, that's not really the show. There's a name for that person. It's not naughty. It's called Not My Target Audience. And once you realize I know who I'm talking to and it's okay if you don't like me, I bet you're going to start doing more than one a month, especially if you got a long list. Let me give you an example. There's a book on Amazon. And one way that you can find out what your potential audience wants is to go to Amazon and look at two-star reviews because they're a little more descriptive than one where they just say, this book was awful, but two might actually say why. So for example, I'm looking at a book about menopause and at one point this person says the, the title is not written for actual women who are busy, brain fogged, and hot. And she goes in, it's just like, this is impossible and it's frustrating with this book. Why does it have to be so dense? Then if we go up to a four-star review, so that person's like, it's too doctory. And then when we go to four-star, there is a person that says, look, you didn't go deep enough into uh, prescribing HRT and all this other stuff that I don't even know what she's talking about, but she wanted it more detailed. And one person is saying, hey, it's too detailed. So you have to figure out who is it you want to talk to which one you're more comfortable talking to and do that and realize that, well, you know, there are probably another podcast for somebody who wants it less detailed or for somebody who wants it more detailed. That's just not your show and that's okay. And I'm here to tell you, it takes a little while to get used to not everybody just loving your show, but that's okay. You have plenty of those that go, Oh, have you been reading my diary? I feel like your show was made for me. And that's all you're looking for. Think about the other thing. We get kind of freaked out about thinking about the audience, right? And instead, think about that one person who needs to hear your content that you're going to help out. And it's just that that one person's like, hey, do you know anything about blah, blah, blah? And you go, blah, blah, blah. I have a master's degree in blah, blah, blah. And you start to tell them like, how do you know all this stuff? And you'll help them. So worry about that one person. Talk to that one person. And all of a sudden, here's this is kind of my bumper sticker. When your need to serve is larger than your fear of looking stupid, you'll press record. And we have a, a fun little punchline here at the School of Podcasting. And the punchline, no pun intended. Nobody's going to punch you in the face. The worst thing they're going to do is swipe left and go, yeah, never mind, and delete your show. And that's okay. You won't even know it. Hey, this is Future Dave. And Andrea, I tried to find you or your podcast on the internet and couldn't find anything. I typed in the name of your show, looked in Apple. So please reach out to me, Andrea. I think I figured out why you're only getting one download per episode is you're invisible on the internet. And while I'm here... I'm going to mention this to everyone, not just Andrea. Put your name in the about page. The first paragraph should be about the show and how people are going to benefit and then have a paragraph about you, but don't just say Dave was blah, blah, blah in my case, right? And don't just say Andrea. Put your full name so if somebody types into Google your full name and the word podcast, you come up in search because I'm finding that a lot where people will say their name and I'm like, mm, like Reese. I don't know how to spell Reese. Is it R E E S R E E S E? And his last name isn't on his website. So if you want to get found, put that stuff out there so people can find you. And Andrea, please reach out to me because I appreciate your answer so much and I want to be sure to put a link to your website. Moving on. Now, as for what I'm not doing in 2024, I'm going to look at all the things I've subscribed to. I have, I've done this in my personal life. Like right now, I think I have a subscription to Netflix and I, I cancel my Hulu. I cancel my Apple and my HBO and all the other ones. And I watch one service until I run out of stuff to watch. And when I do that, then I do another one. And meanwhile, they've been having seasons and seasons and seasons. So I can just binge the heck out of that. So that's one thing I'm doing. And I'm looking at that. In podcasting, I have a bunch of things that I subscribe to, and many times I do this to test them so I can tell you about it or the members of the School of Podcasting, and then I forget to unsubscribe. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, wait, what's that? So there 
are some tools that I think I'm going to unsubscribe from because I know it's only $7 and $5 and $12 and 30. And all of a sudden you go, wait, I'm spending a couple hundred bucks on stuff I don't use. So that's something I'm not going to do. And with that money, then I will then start uh, advertising on shows. So if you have a show that is for entrepreneurs or people with a message, things of that nature, and you think the School of Podcasting would be a good fit for your show. I did mention that I have an affiliate program, so you can make money that way. But in some cases, I'm actually thinking of advertising on other shows that really fit what I feel is my audience. So that's something I'm going to be doing. I'm also planning to, well, there are a couple of things. I have a long list of things I want to do. I want to make an audiobook for profit from your podcast. And that's probably the next thing I'm going to do. The other thing I want to do, and these two are battling it out on what's going to get my attention next, is I want to learn Descript. Uh, Jeff C. is a guy I, I've i kind of known for years, but really got to know a little more this uh, past year. And he has a Descript 101 course. And as we mentioned earlier with Rick, you know, sometimes, yes, it's it costs money for that course, but the amount of time it's going to save is going to be huge. And so that's something I'm looking to do just so I can better help people with that. I might make my own Descript course, but I the thing I really dislike about Descript is about every, well, in during this, you know, time on the episode, we're about 35 minutes in. They've probably updated the interface about three times. They constantly update that software. And it's not like, oh, we changed the word settings into a little gear. Like they move stuff. It's a very much who moved my cheese kind of software. And that again, robs me a time. And so that's the other thing I'm I'm looking at is saving time and really guarding that so that I can give my time where I really want to is to members of the school of podcasting. So that's uh so the audiobook using ads to promote my show along with all the other stuff I want to do. And then the now I'm going to make this I want to renew my YouTube channel so that I can be a YouTuber. And this is where I, my new phrase now, because I heard, I love Tom Webster from Sounds Profitable. He was talking about how people are discovering podcasts on YouTube and it's video podcasts. Well, a video podcast used to be called a YouTube channel. So again, with all respect to, to Tom in my head, so let's do it that in my head that translated to people are discovering YouTube channels on YouTube. And I get that. But Tom also said something. So for me, when I see your video show in Apple, I will call you a podcast. Otherwise, I'm calling you my new term for this is a YouTube podcast because it's only available on YouTube, which we used to call YouTube channel. But, you know, tomato, tomato. But he did say something that I was like, that's that's a Tom Webster makes me go hmm kind of thing. And that is he said, I used to go into Tower Records and you could buy cassettes back in the day and you could buy a cd of some artist you could even buy a vinyl version of whatever you know music artist you're trying to buy but he said maybe we should put the choice in the hands of the listener and i went hmm that's a really good good mm, well done tom uh, webster but i thought about it and so many people think they're going to start dave's word again a youtube podcast so they're starting a YouTube channel to drive people to your audio podcast. And what they do is they turn on their camera, they go live, and they say, Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow. So that's their podcast, and it's on video. And you can see their background, and you can see that they are got blonde hair and you know whatever. And then if you listen to the audio version of that podcast, it says... Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And you're hoping that people who are on YouTube, who like YouTube, like I watch YouTube on my lunch and I got it on the living room, a big screen TV, and I'm watching my YouTube there. And I watch, well, right now I'm kind of watching Ozzy Osbourne and his family. And that's a YouTube thing for me. Now I can get the exact same thing on audio. But for me, for whatever reason, that's a YouTube thing for me, and I watch it on YouTube. So I'm not going to go subscribe to that show on audio so I can get the exact same thing in another location. 
I very rarely had a vinyl and then went out and bought the CD of it, unless it was something like Genesis, which might have some extra clarity to it or something like that. So I say that to say, if you start a YouTube channel, like my YouTube channel, we're kind of, I'll bring this back to me. I want to restart doing additional content on my YouTube channel. And I'll have a link to that out in the show notes. Again, schoolofpodcasting.com slash 917. I want to put additional information there so people can get the audio that gives you this content. And then either a summary of that or just flat out, here's additional content from Dave about podcasting. And all of that, the audio and the video, will drive people back to my website. Because if you haven't figured it out, I want you to join the member and be a member of the school of podcasting. But I think that's one of the reasons why people go, I can't get people to leave YouTube to, you know, boost my audio numbers. And the reason is it's the same thing, maybe, but I do know. And that's one of the things I'm researching is how do you get people to leave one platform, TikTok, Instagram, whatever. I've had people come to Libsyn, which is where I'm the head of podcaster education and they kind of, it's it's kind of one of those, oh, really? Did they just play the don't you know who I am card? And they'd be like, look, I have a gazillion billion people on Instagram and I'm only getting, you know, insert lots of downloads here. And it's just a small portion of their Instagram. It's hard to get people to go from one platform to another. And that's something I am looking into because it may be something that's much harder than you think it is. And so maybe we need another point of view on that. Maybe I just, I've started another channel and it is going to be additional information. But I do want to thank everyone who sent in an answer. A lot of those are brand new people. I appreciate that. I appreciate Mark answering my email about the affiliate thing. That that did a lot of uh, good because I, I was kind of like, what's the deal with that? So thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark, always for listening. That guy answers every question of the month. I thank you so much. And and everyone who's been listening, every time I do one of these, I always think, is this going to be the one where nobody answers? <laughs> I really do. So thank you to everyone. I deeply, deeply appreciate it. Last month, I gave away a Samson Q2U and 30 minutes of consulting. And I just say this to say, if you got an email from me saying, hey, you won. I need your address. That's legit. <laughs> so that's going to be the interesting part of this giveaway is why I actually be able to give it away. And I know everybody's like, Hey, if that guy doesn't want it, if she doesn't want it, I'll take it. But I just want to let you know that giveaway is over. I might try one again in the future, but that is done. So if you haven't followed the show yet, you can do it. School of slash subscribe. And of course that's free. I've got some cool gizmos that I've interviewed the creators of. We've got Gary Arndt coming up talking about what happens when you actually get into new and noteworthy in Apple. Is it something we should be excited about? All sorts of fun stuff. All you got to do, go to schoolofpodcasting.com slash subscribe. And hey, speaking of schoolofpodcasting.com, if you throw a slash listener at the end of that, schoolofpodcasting.com slash listener, you can save on either a monthly or yearly subscription. That comes with a 30-day money back guarantee. And if you've been sitting on the fence, I'm here on the other side saying jump on in. Thanks so much for listening. Until next week, take care. God bless. Class is dismissed. Because my buddy... Lee Silverstein from the cancer con, uh, geez, why can I not talk? The cancer concert. What are we doing? What, what, what was that? Where were you going mouth? And I'll have a link to this. I should have said this before. I'll have a link to all of this out at school of podcasting.com slash nine one six. And I should have done this earlier. Is it nine? No, nine one seven nine one one waiting. Wow. My website is loading very slow today. What's up with that? Meanwhile, it is 917. Well, that's a blooper. He said that maybe we need to put it in the the uh you know, the 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 thing. What am I trying to say? The put it back
Put the ball in the customer's court. Yeah, let's uh, let's rephrase that, shall we?